the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution hello children welcome back to our english class of unit 4 braving the hazards and chapter 2 the sarang of rana ganji for the part 2 session let me begin today's class with a quote the days that break you are the days that make you is it not right yes braving the hazards means endure or face the dangers and that is to pull on the coat and to get ready to brave the elements of the hazardous situations right thousands of people die every year you know due to disasters disaster management has become popular all over the world in recent times there are people who act selflessly and silently at the moment of crisis here in this lesson we deal with a noble spirit of hasan who was squat and ugly and even who is criticized as an absurd creature who looks hardly as human it is said and the second character miss job smith a character in contrast with saran and uh, the third one is dr aj cronin the physician of the ship who is inexperienced in profession and who is in charge of the health of the people who are traveling in that ship the plot of the story is that it is during the voyage from liverpool to calcutta as it is said in the previous session this voyage was during the british rule in india the author the narrator aj cronin and the hero hasan no manage a potential crisis that is an epidemic smallpox when they were in the middle of the arabian sea see here uh, we learn the value of dedication and selfless sacrifice in this lesson and also we understand that your calm mind is ultimate weapon against your challenges shall we begin with the lesson fine yes take your textbook and we'll see to the pdf on the screen page number 113 right young and inexperienced in my profession i had not learned to control my feelings my expression must have altered visibly for although the serang said nothing his line and battered face assumed a look of deeper gravity hurriedly with beating heart i made my way to the bridge where is he planning to go he was getting ready to meet his captain the next character of this an actor captain hamble was not there but in the chart room below he looked up sharply as i burst in sir my voice broke i have to report smallpox on board two of the deck hands i saw his lips draw tightly together he was a thick set man of 55 known as a strict disciplinarian but also as a just and fair minded officer now you come to know about the character of this captain hambel see what i believe is that you know everything is under the hands of the leader who leads a team it is targeted towards that leader the leader is capable enough everything is set then what was his reaction when he heard about the breakout of the smallpox on the ship he was not disturbed right he kept mum 
and very calmly what he said is doctor he said drawing up at last and coming close to me his words unmistakably grim listen you are in charge of the health of the ship it's entirely up to you i can't give you any of my officers i am overloaded and understaffed see the plight of this leader overloaded and understaffed but i am going to give you the serang serang who is serang here hasan okay believe me he is the finest man i have what the description what a leader gives towards his colleague he says that he is the finest man i have you have got to keep this thing from spreading and what's more don't let a whisper of it get out or we'll have a bloody panic how the leader guides his fellow group members he said i understand the gravity of this issue but being the physician of this ship you are highly responsible to stop it from spreading and even you should not let know about this thing to anyone in the ship because people may get panic to stop that to get rid of this difficult situation you have to deal this pandemic situation in a very highly religious way hearing this what aj cronin did is that I left the chat room realizing with a weakness in my stomach the desperate responsibility of my position here we were in the middle of the arabian sea 1500 passengers aboard no means whatever of vaccinating them and smallpox the most deadly contagion in the whole dictionary of disease contagion contagious that spreads terrific back in the surgery in his clinic one of the laskers was in the grip of a violent rigor laskers it's a urdu word okay we have already given the meaning for laskers it is loading man of the ship i turned from the shivering man to the seran whose incalculable eyes remained fixed upon me we have got to isolate these men check on the contacts there was no sick bay on board they didn't have a separate room for sick people to stay not an inch of available cabin space too baffled i looked at the seran who undismayed again turned upon me the full force of his eyes we will make a shelter on the after deck dr sahib very cool there with plenty of fresh air as i was inexperienced i was expecting a positive confidence from hasan and he was ready to give that too he said don't worry doctor i will get ready with a shelter on the after deck it's very cool over there in the stern of the ship protected from view by a battery of derricks and donkey engines he set to work using his presence of mind and with the things available within his limits he started working a sick bay at the tail end of the ship which is highly protected from the view of others within an hour he had erected with silent efficiency a large canvas shelter mattresses and sheets were then brought up and the two patients were comfortably installed our next step was to muster the crew for a thorough medical inspection one of the stokers who complained of fever and headache showed the prodromal nodules with the beginnings of the typical rash he was isolated with the other cases and now who is going to help me attend these men asked aj cronin Hasan glanced at me in surprise and asked why naturally it's i 
Neji Cronin said, you must be careful. This disease is most contagious. I am not afraid, Dr. Sahib, claimed Hassan. Together, Hassan and I sponged the patients with permanganate solution administered to each man a strong antipyretic hung sheets soaked in disinfectant round the shelter and set up within this little secret area a cooking stove where liquids could be heated and simple meals prepared. Next morning, however, brought fresh cause for concern. I found three new cases among the deck hands. The men already segregated were much worse. And that same afternoon, four more of the crew sickened. We now had ten cases in our makeshift lazaretto. It was a situation to test the strongest nerves. But the serang, calm and unperturbed, gave me fresh heart. In tending the patients, he was indefatigable. He was not tired at all. He was not fatigued. Be careful of yourself. I had to beg him. Do not go quite so close. I warned him. A.J. Cronin warned and begged him to be so careful. Now he showed his strong teeth in a sudden fleeting smile. Are you careful of yourself, Dr. Sahib? Indeed, I am. Besides, this is my work, my profession. Do not worry, Dr. Sahib. I am strong and it is my work too. I was so weighed down by responsibility that I had slight concern for myself. Although we were moving full steam ahead, Colombo, the nearest port of call, was still eight days away. In the course of the next 48 hours, four more stokers went to join the others to after deck. A total of 14 now and one of the earlier victims had lapsed into a coma, seemed likely to die at any hour. Under this added load, I could not sleep. I was highly disturbed and frustrated on how to manage this difficult, crucial situation. And there, where I knew I should find him, watchful and mute under the stars, was the seraph. How shall I describe the solace which flowed towards me from him? As he stood there in meditation, with his long arms folded on his bare chest, motionless as a statue. When a sick man groaned faintly, he would step forward without sound to succor him, to help him. And then returning, he would fold his arms and go back to his prayers while the ship surged slowly forward. Hassan had no fondness for speech. Now, A.G. Cronin tries to collect the information of Hassan. Because they have started being together for so many days and there arose a curiosity in A.J. Cronin to know more about him. How come he is able to help such a selfless way? Hassan had no fondness for speech. But despite the silence of our long night vigils, I gathered some fragments of his history. He was from the Punjab whence his parents had wandered to southern India. There, like so many in the coastal area, he had taken to a seafaring life. For nearly 40 years, he had given himself to the oceans of the world and 15 of these years had been spent in the Ranaganji, the tub in which they are travelling now. Indeed, he had no place on shore. Neither family nor friends in the great landmass of India. He had never married too. No one to expect him on land. Nobody to wait for him on land. By religion he was a Muslim. All his life he had acquired nothing. Neither property nor money. His few possessions contained in his ship's chest might be worth a few rupees. The thought hurt me 
and in an access of mistaken sympathy i exclaimed hazen you are doing so much in this emergency the company must give you an extra pay right his forehead creased perplexedly he was silent for a long moment then he answered that made me think a lot about my personal life he said what use is money dr sahib to one who has all he needs i am well enough the way i am he was unmistakably sincere completely detached from the usual hope of reward normally people you know they do something for the sake of getting a benefit for them expecting something in return but he was quite different his concept and views towards money was something that we couldn't imagine in this life his attitude towards life you know was something to be thought about he said money had no interest for him he had always despised it instead he had courage self control and faith do you believe in that does money play a vital role in our life or courage self control and faith what is your opinion think about it and draft it in your notebook okay the men he worked among lived poor and died poor it had become the habit of his mind to disregard tomorrow what is your personal views towards tomorrow standing with him in the liquid moonlight i was stung by a strange fact beside his clear simplicity the world's values suddenly seemed dross a great party had started in the saloon indeed as i viewed my own outlook towards the future my passionate desire for success and wealth i was conscious of a secret shame aj cronin says that he felt a secret shame when he compared himself with the attitude of hasan actually we all run behind this materialistic pleasures right even he says that he was he had a very passionate desire for success and wealth on the following day we lost two of our patients it was hasan himself he sued their shrouds who in his hoarse and hollow voice read aloud a short passage from the ramayana before their bodies wrapped in sail cloth with a weight at their feet were cast overboard at midnight the final rites was given to the dead body giving respect to the souls and he offered prayers though he was born as a muslim he had a respect to all the religions he was not a fanatic he read ramayana before their bodies no fresh cases developed and a week later we anchored off colombo soon the sick man had been taken off to hospital several of the patients showed signs of having passed the crisis but three helpless and delirious a mass of running sores were carried in the arms of hasan as we stood together i saw that the serang's dark cheeks were wet with tears our passage through the bay of bengal was brief and uneventful i had barely time to recover myself or to realize that the pandemic has been confined before we were anchored alongside the quay of calcutta see he felt relaxed relieved that they could control such a contagious disease without many casualties right suddenly at my elbow i heard the familiar shrilling of miss job smith oh look look rani there's that absurd creature again once more i followed their united gaze and there again down in the after hold knocking out the hatch battens to unload the baggage was the object of their mirth, whom they were criticizing and making fun of it was about hasan 
the huntress from Cheltenham swung around, bent her wit, her fascinations upon me. She inquired, A.J. Cronin, you know what? Where did you keep him during the entire voyage, Dr. Dear? In a special cage? Whom do we keep in cage? Animals, right? So, she wanted to call her son indirectly as an animal. She was asking him where he kept this creature. Was it in a special key? Answer of A.J. Cronin gives us a high satisfaction to all the readers. Wait, what was it? Silence, a vision of the Serang's nobility rising before me. Before whom? A.J. Cronin, he replied, yes, in a way, it was a cage. But isn't it queer, Miss Job Smith? The animals were all outside. Understood? Readers all get a highly satisfied tone from the side of A.J. Cronin when he speaks in favor of Hassan. I hope you understood. Even Miss Job Smith would have understood the message what A.J. Cronin intended to tell. Yes, Hazan was in a cage, but with all the animals outside was the meaning what A.J. Cronin said. Actually, how unkind, selfish and snobbish we all are. Don't we feel ashamed in front of this noble character of Hazan? See, actually we understand all that glitters is not gold and beauty lies in the mind not in the outward appearance. Right? So to sum up, let me conclude. Okay, we'll wrap up the session. It is highly necessary to be aware of the different disasters that is that may surround us and to equip according to the situation and act promptly in the moment of crisis. Okay. It's time to extend the hand of peace for everyone. Whenever everyone is in trouble, let us all keep in mind that we all are one, the humanitarian ground. We will support each other. You can't pour from an empty cup, right? I hope you understood. So let us take care of ourselves. Let our cup be filled with values, virtues, qualities, and a heart to listen to everyone. And I'll conclude with the same putting that I have begun with. The days that break you are the days that make you. Thank you, dear children. We'll meet you in the next class. Wishing you all good health. Thank you. Bye.